blessed Sunday morning and warm welcome to one and all to Gali Sunday worship service. Let's prepare our heart to worship our God, Lord Almighty, by seeing the intro. The Lord is in His holy temple. The This morning call to worship taken from the passage Psalm 96 verse, verses 1 to 4. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathens, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Let's all arise for our sing our first song, our opening hymn, Come Down, Found of Every Blessing. next him, God will make a way. Our God is God of miracle. He can make a way when there is no way. The more you put your faith in God, the more you will see his way work for you. Hymns number 704. He will make a way for 
Theme for today's praise and worship from Be Down My Vision. This is the beautiful hymn and good reminder of His love in His presence no matter where we are now. He watches over us and stands by our side whatever we do. Be Down My Vision.
Let's pray together. Lord Almighty, Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that we gather in your house to praise and worship you. We come before you with a grateful heart, thankful for your love, mercy and grace that sustain us each and every day. Lord, we acknowledge you as our true and living God, our Redeemer. You are sovereign, holy, worthy of our worship and adoration. We are grateful for all the wonders that you have worked in our life. You are the pillar of strength, our source of wisdom and knowledge. Lord, we pray for your guidance and directions as we may follow your will in all that we do in our life. Dear fathers, we thank you for your pre precious gift of salvation that you send your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sin and grant us eternal life through his blood on the cross. We are so privileged for this amazing relationship that we have with you. Father in heaven, we thank you for Pastor Simon who will be sharing your words with us. We pray that your you would anoint Pastor Simon as he deliver your message. Give him the clarity of mind and speak your work with truth and wisdom. Help us to be attentive to your words and open to your leading. Grant us the strength and courage to lift up our faith in you. O oh Lord, we pray for your forgiveness of our sin and grant our heart from all the unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for your love and faithfulness. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father. This morning, scripture reading taken from Psalm 22, verse one, verses 1 to 18. I shall invite Brother Sid to lead us to in today's reading of his holy words. Good morning. Psalm 22 is often interpreted as a Messiah psalm because it resembles the suffering and crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in this psalm, David's distress mirrors Christ's suffering. Despite the pain, there's firm trust in God's faithfulness. Now, let us read prayerfully and responsively. Psalm 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my rolling. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, Verse 9, But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make the hope when I was upon my mother's breast. Thou 
Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. They gape upon me with their mouths as a raven and a rolling lion. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue quivered to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my venture. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy words. Let's now continue our worship by giving our tithes and offering to the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessing and opportunity to gather together in worship. We are thankful for your care and provision. You are the gracious God, and all, God, all good gifts that we have in life come from you. This morning, we rejoice to give back to you a portion of what you have given to us. We pray that you would bless this offering May this offering be used to further your kingdom and for your glory. Help us to give cheerfully, knowing that you are a faithful provider. We give this offering to you, Lord, with heart of full gratitude and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those who want to give the cash uh, offering at the uh, box, you can come after the worship service. Then, if not, then you can do your online transfer. Please arise for taxology. Pastor Simon will lead us in the pastoral prayer and followed by today's message. Yes. Children can leave for your Sunday school. look to God in prayer. Our precious and loving Heavenly Father, as you look down from heaven, you see us gathered in your name to worship you and to praise you. And the brethren who have gathered also online for this morning, Together as one people, one community, people for whom you died and brought out of darkness into the marvelous light. Our Lord and our God, thou art the one and only true and living God. There is none beside thee. 
Thou art the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Thou art the author and perfecter of our faith. How we worship you, love you, and profoundly thankful to you for your bountiful blessings upon all of us. Thank you, Lord, for your patience with us, that you have been very gracious to us, merciful to us. You have been accommodating our lack of understanding of who you are. And patiently you walk with us, informing us, instructing us, even from your word. Thy word is indeed, is the light to our path. Oh Father, we thank you for keeping us well in the past week. Thank you, Lord, as we read all sorts of mishaps, accidents. As we even scan the horizon, we see nations at war, lack and confusion in society, troubles of one kind or another or another. Lord, how we are thankful this morning. Peacefully we have gathered without fear to worship the Lord together. We pray for our government. May the Lord continue to grant the Prime Minister, the Cabinet, Lord, wisdom and understanding that they may know how to navigate in these troubled times, speaking the right words, securing the nation's future, and looking after every subject of this country. Precious Lord, we pray and we commit the leadership in thy hands of the church. Continue to lead and guide us. Pray for the pastoral team. The Lord will be with them. Guide them, grant them health and strength, wisdom from above. As they counsel and guide, that they may give the right guidance, enabling people to see things properly and do things well. Pray for the Board of Elders as they are the defenders of the faith. Lord, as they watch over the church, may the Lord be with them, give them clarity of heart and mind. And we pray as a board, there will be unity always you know, in our midst, oneness of spirit and mind, that we will do things together, respecting each other, understanding each other, that our primary objective is to glorify the Lord. We pray, Lord, for the session, and as the whole session, as we are approaching the elections, our session members, thank you, Lord, for sustaining them, granting them health and strength, enabling them to discharge their duties faithfully. Despite all the other commitments, Lord, they have done their best. And they are now, again, have to consider whether to continue another term Lord, you have been good in their lives. You have blessed them tremendously. As they pray towards you for your confirmation, which direction to take, we pray, Father, that you will lay upon their hearts very clearly that they will do what you want them to do. Precious Lord, we thank you for our people, for the way you have sustained us. We are small in numbers. Lord, we have huge responsibilities. There's so many ministries that we have to part ourselves with and participate. Sometimes we have to wear more than one hat. Thank you for sustaining the congregation. Thank you for keeping the ministry going. Thank you, Lord, for yesterday VBS, for the 30 over children that came. Many hands were involved. We thank you for the uncles and aunties who helped in many significant ways, and the TFYF to take charge of all the uh, more active areas of the program. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the extra mile our people go, the sacrifices they make, the passion they have for the Lord's work, and willing to accommodate each other and stand in the gap if necessary and pull along everyone together to do well in the Lord's work. 
The church belongs to you, Lord. You founded the church. You died for this church. You shed your blood to redeem this church. And we pray this church will continue to hold fast to thy word, to the truth, and stand at a lighthouse in this place and beyond. We pray that you bless every ministry, Sunday school ministry, SSG ministries, fellowship ministries, O oh Lord, visitation, evangelism, missions, that we will be doing our best. We pray, Father, that you give the leaders wisdom. As we have a very large space and we are paying very high in our rents, how can we be more effective, better stewards of the resources you have given to us? Lay upon our hearts to do that which is good. Father, in 14 years or less, maybe 12 years, we are done with this place. What is your will for us? We pray, Father, as the congregation come together for ACM next week, that we will look at things honestly, frankly, clearly, talk with one another, and express our concerns, provide our suggestions, because we are all together in this. And we are one people, we will do what is necessary, trusting you, looking up to you, that you set the direction for us. So Lord, much burden is on our hearts, anxieties, cares, worries, but you have called us to cast our burdens upon you and to trust you that you will run rivers in the wilderness and be the path in the desert. We pray, Father, that we will do just that, looking up to you and grant us wisdom as to how we can translate our faith into proper works that reflects our faith. We commit, Father, this morning, brethren who are recovering, we pray for our brother Roy Chia, Thank you for seeing him through the surgery. May you grant him speedy recovery. The discomfort he suffers, we pray, Father, that it will be eliminated and uh, he will come through quickly out of it. We pray, Father, for Matthew Tan, who has fractured his toe in the soccer game. We pray the Lord will be with him. Grant him full recovery. Help this young man, Lord, to uh, take care of himself and uh, pray for Elder Tan that you will comfort him and strengthen him, give him grace. Pray for our sisters, Candy, Sean's mother. We pray, Father, that you be with her as she struggles with her conditions, wondering how to manage. Not sure to many of her questions, what's the answer? We pray, Father, that even as she journeys through with her husband and family, we pray for Sam, the Lord will be with him, grant him comfort and grant him grace, wisdom as to how to comfort his dear wife. Pray, Father, that Candy will be able to manage and rise above it and trust the Lord for grace and strength. We pray for our brother Joseph, who recently had quite a situation with his heart. May the Lord be gracious to, to him. Grant him strength and grace. We commit, Father, for the rest of us with our pre-existing conditions. By your grace, we pray, Father, we will be responsible to our medical appointments, to take our medications, and to look after ourselves so that we can serve you in this church the remaining time of our lives. Father, we want to commit the church camp in thy hands. We pray that the response will be good. People will come forward. May the Lord bless this arrangement. Pray for Deacon Joseph and his team. Lord, we pray that again we will have another good time of fellowship in the camp. Pray that things will fall in place and may you grant the leader's wisdom as well. We commit, Lord, Mandarin service in thy hands as thy word will be preached and the people be ministered. We pray for youth worship service. The Lord will be gracious. 
Bless the work. Lord, pray for the young people that they will be founded in the truth. We pray for the session meeting this afternoon. May the Lord guide and lead. Father, we, we cast ourselves at thy feet. Only you can lead us, strengthen us, and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, next week is a ACM. Uh, a wonderful time. We're going to tell you things that you need to know, and uh, we need to plan work. It's, uh, it's a very important. Please, everyone, take the trouble to attend the ACM, all right? Uh, please come and attend the ACM. Uh, those who are non-members, you want to know what is going on in the church, you may do so. Perhaps you can take the balcony as your, as your seats and you just watch there so that it doesn't affect the, the distribution of the quorum, you know, the tickets that we give out. So, but it's good. Even people who are worshipping with us regularly, you want to know where the church is going, what we are facing, fine. Please uh, attend the ACM. No problem. It's not a secret meeting. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a commonwealth of knowledge and concerns for the future of the church. I'm also glad that uh, when I was away, my wonderful associate pastor has uh, released information a little prematurely, but it is okay. I, I was listening to the message after I was informed. Uh, in Tokyo, I would turn on and I was going through to see what our brother said. He said it right, he said it well, it was well fitting in the message and I am so happy for that. This week's bulletin, I have put it in record, so I have written about the ordination. We thank God after so many years in Galilee, such a good thing is happening. I want to encourage all of you Please make that Saturday, which is the eve of our church anniversary, be present, all right? Be present, support our brother. Your presence will give him encouragement. And, uh, and we are moving into another phase, isn't it? This is making way also for succession. Don't, 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 don't get worried, okay? Succession, succession doesn't mean I, I, I'm just going to give it to David and walk away. No, that, that won't happen. It's not very responsible to do that. But what I'm saying is that uh, we will be going that direction and uh, may the Lord bless us in our endeavor. This morning we are looking at 1 Samuel, you know, a divided heart. Have you ever experienced a divided heart? Uh, from very sm small, insignificant things to very big things, you know, a divided heart. To do or not to do, to go or not to go, to buy or not to buy. Uh, that sort of thing. We, we, are, we experience this. It's, it's not uh, something very uh, unusual condition. It's, I may call this a divided heart syndrome, which happens to all of us. You know, even, you know, sometimes you go to a hawker center, uh, there are two good things in this place. Somebody said, this one is very good, that one is very good. You, you cannot eat both. You can only eat one. And, and, and you know, you say, okay, like, you buy that one, I buy this one, but I, I take a little bit from yours. It's a, it's a divided heart, you know. But that's a very, very, what you call uh, uh, a small thing. But we do have a conflict in us. But we are looking at something a lot more bigger, a lot more major, where, uh, uh, where God is involved, our relationship is involved, where our uh, spiritual development is involved, our maturity, no matter where we are, what stage we are, whether you're a pastor or whether you're a new member or a new believer, this, this what you call struggle that happens uh, in the, in the, within a person is a very real thing. I go through that, you go through that. So we are looking at something very familiar. We are looking at uh, three characters. Uh, we are looking at Solomon, we are looking at uh, uh, his son, uh, 
uh, his son Rehoboam, and then we're looking at the third person, Jeroboam, and how their hearts were divided. And let us not throw stones at them because uh, it is not something locked in their time. May I just say this? If you want to walk away 300 years from now, all right, 300 years into the past, you will realize there are many things different. The way we cook, the way we go about places, uh, the way we dress, the way we live, the kind of houses, and all the 300 years ago is different. Today is very different. 300 years from now, probably AI will run everything. When you come to the house, AI will start everything, and in fact, we are already into it. If you don't realize it, when you go on certain sites a little too often, AI registers that this person likes facial cream, and every time it pushes facial cream into your first page, that is AI's operation. So in, in, in time to come, this is going to be more pronounced, whether in military, whether it's in social circles, it's going to be very pronounced. But you know what? Huge changes 300 years ago to what we have today, and 300 years from now, it's going to be a lot of change. But one thing don't change. That's man, the divided heart. One struggle don't change. That's between us and God. Between the forces of darkness and the church. It, that doesn't change, whether 300 years ago or now or before uh, or in the future. These things. So in other words, this is a relevant subject. This is a relevant subject. <clears throat> so we're going to look at two points this morning. First one, what actually causes a divided heart? And, and, and first John tells us, and there are basically three areas that constantly comes uh, about to cause this division. We will look at that. And then uh, what's the correction for a uh, divided heart? What can we do about it? And I can tell you one thing right from the beginning. This is going to be something you're going to deal with all the rest of your life. All right? It is not a, a broken bone that once it's fixed, it's okay, now you can walk about. It's going to break again and again and again and again and again because of our callousness, our propensity to doing things the way we want to do, the way we relate with one another. Uh, all this, when it comes in, it, it is between me or God, between scriptures or self. This is the tension, all right? This is the tension, and this is how we're going to look at it. This passage is uh, in First Samuel, um, uh, First King, rather, First King, uh, chapter eleven. Um, <clears throat> before we read the passage, uh, let me uh, say some uh, uh, opening words. If I haven't said enough, uh, these are some of the opening words. From time to time, there is a tug of war between the mind and the heart, between God's word and the tempting world, between the prompting of the Holy Spirit and the persuasion of the flesh. In Christ, our battle between submission and resistance persists on till we see Christ. The scuffle in the heart, a spiritual condition, perhaps I may call it the divided heart syndrome. One thing is certain, unless God's love for us is unconditional, we will falter and fail only to eventually perish in our fruitless endeavor to meet the benchmark set for us by our Lord. Praise God for His mercies and grace, His unconditional love, and the atoning work of Christ on the cross, despite our lack. Because He has set His heart upon us while we were sinners, we all have hope only in Christ Jesus. We can echo the words of Paul, and he said this, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this tension, from this conflict, from this struggle. And he said, I thank God through Christ Jesus our Lord. It's not that always we will lose the battle, but it is also true that we don't always win the battle. That's the sad part. The very fact you go on your knees and say, Lord, please forgive me my sins, means you have entertained the wrong side of the core. That's what it is. If you don't have that, there's nothing to confess. Nothing to confess. And you and I are tempting bait for or tempting candidates for temptation because it's still relevant in us that we will subject ourselves or drawn to temptation because we are roped in this flesh. This flesh has got that drive that gives you this struggle. The only time 
we will ever retire from this is when we enter into eternity in God's presence. Till then, this is going to go on. All right? So, what are the three areas? In John, John chapter 2, verse 16 and 17 captures these three areas, and I want to capture the three areas into our passages that we're looking at. Chapter 11, 10, uh, chapter 11, 10, 11, and 12. All right? We're going to look at it. 11, I'm not going to fo focus very much, but il, uh, il, uh, not on the 10, but 11 and 12. We're going to look at that. And this is what it says, for all that is in the world. Are we in the world? Yes, we are in the world. The last of the flesh and the last of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And we are conductive to these things. You know, we, we are very easily able to come into connection. And the world is passing away, and the last thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. In other words, between the temporal and the eternal, and the temporal should be put where it should be. If we in, go too far into that one, we're going to realize that it is only for a short while, and then we're going to run into trouble. All right, this is what I would, how I would put it. The improper desires are driven by the flesh. The improper desires are driven by the flesh. The improper desires built up from what we see, the last of the eyes. The improper boastful pride, which is the pride of life, the extravagant lifestyle that we sometimes like to uh, pay attention to. There is a right and wrong perception of things and feelings, but when seeking to realize beyond scriptural defined boundaries, they become wrong. Right? When you look at a food and you slive it, it's not sin. Okay? It's not sin. That's natural appetite. Where, but when you become a glutton, then that is sin. When it doesn't stay within defined space given in the scriptures, then we cross the boundaries. Then we are transgressors before the Lord. So let us look at uh, chapter 11. A very famous character, um, and, and we all know. But, you know, in chapter 10, amazing. It, it, it describes of his wealth, the height of his fame, uh, Solomon's fame, and how Queen Sheba comes with gold and silver and spices and whatever commodities of those times were celebrated as, as valuables, you know, and rightful gifts for a king and tributes for the king. All were brought in huge loads, Tons of it, if you want to say. And she brought it, and she wanted to test uh, Solomon out because she heard so much about him. And when she found out all to be true, she said, Wow, you are more than what I have learned of you. And that is how much God has blessed Solomon. A man who began his journey after taking over from his father, David, in a very right and proper manner. Because God asked him, What do you want? He said, I, I'm a child. I don't know how to look after this huge kingdom. I need wisdom. And God said, because of the way you humbled yourself and you asked for the right thing, I'm going to give you a lot more. And that's what we realize in chapter 10. He was given so much. He is blessed so much. He is, at, he is the epitome of wealth, prosperity, and power. And chapter 11 is the downfall. Chapter 11 we read, but, that's the first word, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, uh, women of five different nations, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn your heart after the, their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Sometimes they say, oh, you know, Solomon married, uh, you know, he made 700 proposals, 700 valentines. Even then his lifetime is not enough. It takes 700 years, isn't it? But it almost like every weekend he, or every week he made how to live with 700 wives. I mean, 
is, is everything is overboard. And here is a man who has married, even from the five nations mentioned, plus the Egyptian nation, how many women, all the women who, are, uh, who, are, who goes for beauty pageant, he just marries them all. There are 25, all 25 come in, you know, all line up, uh, this whole week will be wedding. And then another, uh, another beauty pageant in uh, Ammonite, and then all will come. I don't know how he configured this. And even for political reason, how big was the world then? How many superpowers were there? And this man has a tremendous appetite for the flesh. So I, I don't want to imagine you are trying to do a you know, political alliance. I don't think that there are 700 nations that you need to manage. Even today, in today's context, how many powerful nations are there? And here is a man who the word there is not for political reason. It says he loved many strange women. And the conclusion in verse 2 says, Solomon clave unto these whole affairs in love. And he had 300 concubines. I think all the wives have to wear name tag. So every time you see the woman, okay, you are from this country, okay, today I will have lunch with you. Yeah, I, I, don't, I mean, this is mind-boggling. Here is a man who has had everything uh, you can possibly imagine. I don't think any man and, uh, uh, make a wish like that. And I wish I have 700 wives. No, no man is silly enough to do that. I mean, this is very expensive. You know? Uh, okay, now maybe we'll move away before I sow thoughts in your head. All right. But the Bible in verse 9 says, the Lord was angry with Solomon. Not too long ago, God was very pleased with Solomon, and now God is very angry with Solomon because of his old age, and his wives turned his heart away from God. Wasn't he warned? He was warned. He was clearly told to the people of Israel, don't marry somebody outside the faith, because when you do that, it's going to be trouble. And this man got 700 wives. Where go hope, you tell me? Surely they will turn their hearts away. The devil tactically uses the appetite of his flesh to divert him from his focus on the Lord. And this is indeed the last of the flesh. If you want to go into a direct comparison based on 1 John, a direct comparison would be when when Eve saw the fruit and she said, wow, it looks like an amazing fruit to consume. That is the last of the flesh. In fact, there is another thing, the pride of life, everything else rolling there. But just look at the last of the flesh. She looked at it and she desired for it. Isn't it? When Jesus was in the, in the what you call the wilderness, in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was in the wilderness. He was fasting. Isn't it? 40 days he was fasting. I can't even pass two hours, my lunchtime. My family becomes worried when I'm with them, when I pass my lunchtime, because I transform to a very irritable person and not nice, and I will just gobble up the food and I don't enjoy the meal. So this is just talking about one, two hours. I'm very weak. I'll be tempted, even if it is very sweet, I'll eat it. You know, though it's not the best food for me. Forty days. And Satan said, guess what? Here is Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Fasting for 40 days. He is, if he is 100% human, and he is, this is the weakest moment of his life. Let's do it. Not too long ago, was he baptized? Yes. And he's beginning in the mission. The mission is to lead people to God, die for their sins. So he, he has to come in here right from the beginning. And he went to the Lord and he said, you know what, you're suffering so much. Actually, I know who you are. I know how much power you possess. Let's make it easy, all right? And also show to me what you can do. You see the stone there? And there are some descriptions saying that the stone looks like bread. But actually, when you're very hungry, you start to hallucinate. Uh, and I used to try fasting. 
I, I tried fasting, you know, because I felt that when you fast, you become closer to God. But actually, I go closer to restaurants and uh, coffee shops and all that. Because I start to hallucinate, and I gave up on the idea of fasting. Is it because of my disease or what? I don't know. But this is a long time ago. And I remember sitting outside the church door, uh, inside, or rather inside, but the first table, a full-time worker. I must, you know, have a power, you know. So I fasted, and I tried, but I start to hallucinate. Oh, Swenson ice cream. And then my Indian food, banana leaf. All keep coming. Barely past two, three hours. And I'm here suffering 40 days. Tell me, is there a chance or not? There is a chance. And so he came and he tempted the Lord. And he said, if you can turn this into bread, number one, I, I respect who you are. Wow, you really have power. And number two, save yourself. Save yourself. All right? Feed yourself. You don't need to go and look for a shop. I don't, I don't think even you can make it there. And he's alone there. Right? That's a good time. When Eve was alone, and she was perfect, and he succeeded, and you see here Jesus, the Son of God, of course you know who he is, and he's in his human flesh, and he is perfect, let's give it a shot. If I can take Eve, maybe I can take him. And if I take him, then God's plan is pulverized. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Isn't it? Now the tempter came to him and he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones, become bread. And he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then you have the next one. So this is what we call the lust of the flesh. Then you have the next person. The next person is Rehoboam. Solomon is now gone. Rehoboam came into the picture. Rehoboam is a young man taken over the empire. Relatively peaceful, plenty of money. He is a spoiled brat. He is a multi-billionaire now, sitting on the throne, and he is running the nation. And then Jeroboam from the north came down and he spoke to Rehoboam and said, you know what, your father has been very unkind to us. The taxes were way too much. A lot of projects that was your father building and doing. And then, you know, can you give us a tax relief? Can you, can you bring the tax down? Make our life a little bit better. So wisely he said, go away, come back three days' time. Let me think about your proposal, right, your request. And I thought that was a very smart thing to do. So he went to see the man that served with David. He has an older generation sitting there, and he went there and he asked them, all right, hey, excuse me, this morning I had this bunch of guys coming from the north, and they're asking for tax relief. They said it's a bit too heavy for them. What do you think I should say to them? And these wise men of David, this, 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 uh, this board of David's elders, and this board said, you know what, consider them, accommodate them, and uh, surely their request is not unreasonable. But if you show kindness to them for the rest of their lives, lives they will serve you. And this is a good point for you to, to, to show the world what kind of a king you are, to, sh to show your subject, your compassionate, caring, loving person. And the Bible says that right away, as he walked out of that, that place, he rejected the council. He didn't even thought through what they said. He simply rejected the council. This is an old-fashioned idea. Throw it out. Then he went to talk to those guys that he played golf with, you know, all the young fellas. And he said, hey, in one of those uh, tee off points, he said, yeah, I got these guys coming around and ask me, and, uh, what do you think? And the guy said, come on, who are these fellas? You are the king, you know, mind you. You know your ancestry, David, Solomon, and you. These are rags and bones from the north coming to tell you what to do. Reject them, tell them. You're going to beat them up. You're going to make it more difficult. Don't mind mine. They said, I'm really going to make it difficult for you. And he liked that. He said, wow, that makes me feel good, isn't it? 
That makes me feel powerful. So he went and said exactly what this young man told him. All right? You can see from verses 6 to 7 onwards in chapter 11. And you see that this is called the pride of life. The pride of life is a sinful desire to bring attention to yourself. Right? Attention to yourself. The things that we wear, the things that we carry. You know, is it wrong to carry Louis Vuitton? It's not wrong, but what's your intention? You know? Is, is the world out there creates all these huge brands so that you will get the attention, isn't it? When a person carries a very expensive handbag, you don't look at the person, look at the bag. As the bag goes, the lady's eyes also goes. Wow. Why we carry a normal bata bag, nobody, nobody will look. <laughs> but you wear something, you know, but I'm not against brands, all right, please. It's good to carry some brands, it's okay. All right, but, but you need to know why you carry it. <laughs> Why you spend $15,000 for a bag where you can get a just as good bag in coach or couch, coach, coach, coach bread, <laughs> coach. It does the same thing. It is reasonable, beautiful, maybe $300, you can get a nice bag. But, but what is the idea? Why the world carry? Let's not talk about ourselves, okay? You guys are all good. You all don't think like that. But why does the world carry that way? The world carries that way so that attention will come to them. And this is what this man is doing. Wow, I like this young guy's view, you know. I want the attention for myself. And that same thing happened to the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. Then the devil, see whether I have it here. Uh, then the devil took him up to a holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he, that means your heavenly father shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you shall dash your foot against a stone. Attention towards the Lord. Isn't it? Proof, 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 proof that your father loves you. Hey, come on. You think your father will just watch you jump and, 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 and break his legs? No, of course not. The legions of angels will descend. Guess what? What a display of who you are. This is it. Come on, show me, show me, show me, show me. Isn't it? That's what uh, we see here uh, in this particular passage. And Jesus said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Isn't it? The devil's word that instigate doubt in God or stir arrogance in the Lord did not work at all. The correct perception of God will enable us to ward off such precarious moments. Sadly, the nation split into two because of Rehoboam's attitude and uh, trouble. Then we come to the last one, Jeroboam. Now Rehoboam said, no, Jeroboam is now the leader of the top and actually, God said to Jeroboam, through a prophet, that I'm going to give you ten tribes. All right? You will be the leader there. And this is flowing out of some things that didn't go right in the previous generation. I'm going to give it to you. You will have it. He knew God has given to him. All right? But what he did was, he wanted more than what God has given. He wanted for himself everything. So this is called the lust of the eye, sinful desire to possess. Possess. God has actually given. So what he did was, when the nation split up, the north went up there, south remained, Judah, Jerusalem, Benjamin stayed down, and, and he is up there. But you know what? The people have to come down south to worship offer sacrifices. He is afraid when they do that, eventually he will lose his influence. So what he did was, he set up another worship place up there. And he said, no need to go down, just do it here, all right? No need to go Shiloh, I, I will set up here for you. Do it here. And then he set up 
two calves. The Egyptian god comes into the picture. I don't know why these calves never go away. You know, until today, they haven't gone away. They haven't. If you go to, if you go to the, the temple that I belonged to last time, at the right at the entrance is the calf. You pass the calf, then you go in. Right at the entrance. All right? It has a name and it's, a, it's, it's worshipped. It's a very important one. So sometimes you wonder why people of my previous faith uh, worship cow. But that's, that's the whole idea. You see how far into history it is traveling down even till now. The condition of man, the fallen nature of man then and now never changed. The darkness in man resides the same as it is today. Whether it's 300 years ago or 1,000 years ago, the darkness in man, the rebellion towards the true and living God, remains consistent. Even into the AI age, it will be the same. There is no change. All right? So what he did was, he created a false religion there, and he created idol worship and kept the people up there. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 7 and 10, and this is another situation that the Lord did. All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul. All right? Love your God and him only you shall serve. You don't serve yourself. You just serve. So what is the antidote? What is the correction for such a divided heart? First, the knowledge of scriptures. Help to synchronize our will with God's will. Friends, if anybody come and tell you something and you have never heard before, can you please do yourself a favor? Ask where in the Bible it is written. Is it too difficult to ask? Don't every time praise the Lord, praise the Lord, you know. People say something, praise the Lord. Why? It becomes a cliche, you know. When people tell you something and you have never heard before, it's new. Ask yourself or ask the person, where in the scripture does it say? That's the final, your final station is in the Word of God. When you don't have the knowledge of God's Word, you will entertain all kinds of ideologies, methodologies, philosophies, and you will just go bonkers. Ask. Let the person who is promoting something explain to you. Is it too difficult? Is it at your privilege? The person say, you do A, you get this. Oh, really? How nice. Please tell me, where did you get this idea from? Where did you get it? From Shopee? Amazon? A Bible? Oh, Bible. Okay, tell me, where in the Bible? Knowledge of God's Word is very crucial to, to keep us intact in this life. All right? Second, our love and devotions for God must remain the high, must enjoy the highest place in our hearts. <clears throat> Jesus said, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind, 100 percent. That is the first and the great commandment. Love of God, not love of the world. And the Bible tells us, the one who loves the world have not the love of the Father. Isn't it? So, the third one is, we will only serve God and not ourselves. All right? We will only serve God and not ourselves. So, we be very clear. If you want to condense this whole thing together, it is entertaining self or entertaining God. You're putting God on the throne or you're putting yourself on the throne. That's the key thing. That's the bottom line. And no matter how far we travel in our Christian faith, the tension, the struggles are absolutely real. And we are potential candidates. Therefore, the test will go on 
and we constantly have to look to God for grace and strength. Let us look to God. Pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves in thy hands. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us intact in the faith. And sometimes we aren't very sure which is the direction to go. And we pray, Lord, your word will be our counsel. Fellow brothers and sisters, as they have walked the path before, they are sharing and their counsel will indeed uh, help us further build us as a church, help us to care for one another, and forgive us our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for the message. In response to this, uh, what we have learned today, let us all rise to sing the closing hymn, I Surrender All. And now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of our Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us, both now and ever. Amen.
On behalf of the pastors and sessions, I would like to extend a warm welcome once again to all to worship together with us this morning. Uh, I have a visitor cards today. Uh, it's a brother who visits us for the first time. When I call your name, would you mind you rise on your feet so that we can welcome you? Brother Hao Rui Mu. Yes, uh, please stay back uh, after the worship so that uh, as some refreshment at the fellowship hall, uh, then we can uh, know you better and fellowship with you after this. Welcome. Hope to see you again. Okay. Um, let me highlight some of the church announcements uh, for this week. Okay, uh, Mandarin, there will be a gospel rally on the 30th of March, on Saturday, 4.30. So for those who have uh, Mandarin-speaking friends or neighbors, you can invite them to come to this uh, gospel rally, and uh, dinner will be provided. Okay? So if you have any queries, you can always approach uh, pastors, Raymond Yong, or the deacons uh, at the Mandarin site to get more information. Second, okay, RFM, Rally Free Market is back. Okay, this is our church uh, outreach activities uh, where everybody can take part. Uh, if you have any item at home uh, that you wish to give away, you can bring it to the church and uh, we will actually uh, sort up according to the items and uh, we will actually giving away free to our neighborhood. So uh, the closing date is actually 13th of April. So you still have about a month for you to, to do a bit of spring cleaning at home. Okay, the event will be held on the 20th of April so that the committee will have some time to sort out the items. Okay, and uh, please mark on your calendar. And also we need many more helpers uh, on the day to come and help. So when you are available on the 20th of April, to come to the church and can mix around with our neighbor from our, this uh, Pandan Garden neighborhood. Okay, and uh, also I was told that uh, all items are welcome except the lady clothes. Okay, if you have uh, any uh, questions, uh, you can always uh, contact Dickness Hannah for more information. Next. Okay, our church camp. It's coming uh, 12 to 15 of June, which is actually less than three months from now. Okay, uh, I understand we have not reached the number yet. So if you do not, you have not uh, registered, uh, please do so as soon as possible. Uh, the counter is open at the fellowship hall after the worship service. And uh, also you can take this opportunity to invite your friends or colleagues, your relatives to join the camp. All are welcome. Uh, this year we adopt free offering so that you may uh, find out more information from the camp committee. They are working very hard for this, to put this up, so don't miss the opportunity to join the camp. And this is time for us to uh, learn God's words at the same time to build the bonding among the church member, uh, among the church member in the church. Okay? One, next. Okay, uh, before that, I will play a video for the JFCF uh, activities, Vacation Bible School, which was held yesterday. Uh, we thank God for the success of these uh, activities, and we are so blessed that we have 30 children uh, come together to, to learn the God's words and also mingle around. Uh, 